So I've been using RebNote and it's been fantastic for my students and for myself in making flashcards. So if you wanna give this a try, what I'm gonna go over in this video are the five ways, there's six total, but the five ways to use flashcards in OneNote and then I'm gonna share eight flashcard making tips to help you make better flashcards. So let's get into it. First, there are one-way flashcards in RemNotes. There are two-way flashcards and there are multi-line flashcards. There's also image occlusion where you can hide a part of an image, but that's the pro version, which I don't have, so I'm not gonna be going over that. So I'm gonna go over these five versions. So first, a one-way flashcard over here. The way that you create a one-way flashcard is you are going to type the forward side of a card and you're gonna type in the greater than sign two times and then you'll get the back side of the card and this will be a one-way flashcard. So what that looks like over here is if I were to type in a question such as Herman Ebbinghaus. So I'm gonna do a bad flashcard and I'll explain why it's bad later. And then I'm gonna do the two arrows, one, two, and I'll get a back side of the card over here and I'll type in over here was a German psychologist who founded the forgetting curve. So right now I have the front of the card and the back of the card over here. So if I were to then go up to the top and I were to go and practice my rem over here, I have over here at the front of the card, like I wrote, Erman Ebbinghaus. And then my goal is to try and retrieve, recall what was the, the backside. He was a, a German psychologist who founded the experimental psychology of memory. Oh, no, he founded the forgetting curve. Okay, so that one I had only partially recalled. So you can, at the bottom over here, grade how well you did. And I created an acronym to help you figure out how well you're doing with this curve over here. And that acronym is FEIST over here. FEIST stands for forgotten, effortfully called, immediately recalled, struggled to recall, or too soon over here. And based on of these five levels of your memory, you can kind of figure out when should you next test yourself. And it includes when you should next test yourself on the card, but you don't even have to worry about that because it will automatically, when you go into practice your flashcards, give you the ones that are most important for you to test according to the timing over here. So in this one, I should really test myself in 30 minutes on this because I partially got it over here. So I click on partially recalled over here. So that was a one-sided flashcard that was front to back. I can also do a, if I go back to this slide, I can also create a flashcard that is back to front over here. So a backwards card over here, I'm gonna reverse the way of the arrows. So instead of writing Ermin Ebbinghaus that way, I could write Ermin Ebbinghaus, and then I do the reverse version. So down at the back of the card was a German psychologist who founded the forgetting curve. And now in this case, if I test this, I'm gonna get rid of this card. it's going to test me th with the information on the back and it will try and have me remember what was on the front over here. So that's a backwards flashcard. In order to create a two-way flashcard, I'm going to create the arrows that look like this, that has front side and then back side with the arrow open and then the arrow closed. So the, the less than greater than sign over here to create a two-way flashcard. And that will test me on both parts of it. Alternatively, if you already have a flashcard made, you can click on the arrow in the middle and you can switch it to a two-way flashcard in the middle over here. If you were to simply type that, so Ermin and then was, what I could do in the middle, I can do the open flashcard over here and then the closed, and that would become a two-way flashcard. And it will test me on both sides of the flashcard over here. So if I click on practice RAM again, you'll see the this time it decided to do the front of the flashcard. If I were to do it, it's gonna randomize which one it's gonna get me over here. Um, and then the second one, it did it from the back over here. So you can see it will test you from both ways of the flashcard. Next up, we have a multi-line flashcard. Let's say you have a lot of information you want to go over. You can create a multi-line flashcard. A good example of a multi-line flashcard is something like this over here. So I have um, Feist over here. When we test ourselves, there's five levels of recall to be aware of. So I create a multi-line flashcard. The way that I did that was I typed in what are the five levels of recall, and then I did the one arrow, two arrow, and then you add a third arrow over here, and it creates this little drop down. And I could write the, the letters are I E S F T, or if you wanted to spell it, that spells Feist F E I S T. That's the acronym I created. And then if you were to test this one over here, 
all of these different pieces of information would pop up at once. So let me do this in a blank document over here so you guys can see. So if I were to create this again, paste this in, five levels of recall. Um, so if I were to test this, practice, you'd see that it has over here, it's a front and back over here. So it's trying to ask us these things. What are the question? I'm going to change this flashcard to be only uh, front lay over here. So it's going to give me the front over here, and then it's going to make me remember this. Although there is benefit to trying to remember the question as well. You'll have to, um, we'll talk about the methods later, but you'll have to think about which way you want your flashcard. So now I had this set to front only. So it's going to give me the question, and it's going to give me the question. Okay, yes, I will remain Q. So you'll notice it's not giving it to me because I clicked partially. It's not going to give it to me for another 30 minutes, <laughs> which is not convenient for the video. But over here, the five levels of recall, it's going to only show me the six ones over here. If I make another flashcard over here, what are the five levels of recall? What I could also do is I could be asked to try and recall in a certain order. The way that I do that is similar. I do one, two, three to do a multi-line flashcard. But now the first thing that I do is instead of just typing, which creates a bullet, I'm going to type one period, and it creates a numerical flashcard. And that numerical flashcard is going to have a list that makes me recall in that specific order. So in this case, I'll type in immediately, then effortfully, struggled, forgotten, completely, and then too soon. So for this flashcard over here, it's going to make me do it in that specific order. So what are the five levels of recall? The first one was immediately okay then the next one see it's not giving me them all at once effortfully struggled forgotten completely and too soon over here so it will then make you go step by step so those are the five types of flashcards that are accessed for free you have front back back fronts two-way flashcard it'll test you both ways bullet points revealed all at once and numerical flashcards so this is a great time to go practice making your own flashcards over here but before i completely end the video, I want to go over some of the eight methods, as I mentioned, for flashcard tips over here. So tip number one, put only one piece of information per flashcard. If you put two or more pieces on the card, you have no problem recalling part of the easier information, but you'll keep repeating the card to practice more difficult information. Skip the easy information. You don't want to repeat the testing of that. That would be an immediate recall. And according to an immediate recall of that information, you really want to wait like four days to test that. So you don't want to be doing that immediately. So if you split your flashcards up, one of the convenient things is that you'll only practice the stuff that you need to practice. So make as many cards as you can with as little information on the card as possible. Be very part number two. Be concise about that. Use specific wording and ask specific questions with your flashcards. Don't leave yourself wondering what the flashcard is asking for. So earlier I had asked the question over here about Ermin Ebbinghaus and who he was. So for Ermin Er Er Min Ebbinghaus. So the reason that it was a bad flashcard was because when I made this flashcard, it was too vague. I didn't know what to be test. So instead of just Ermin Ebbinghaus, I might ask, what did Ermin Ebbinghaus do with his study on memory? And then I could also test myself on what, why did Ermin decide to test his methods. So like if you split it up into more questions over here, those questions, you'll figure out which ones you know and which ones you don't know. The more you break it down, the more you're going to be identify what you do and don't know. So I'm making more concise flashcards instead of just having, you know, just a name where I got it wrong because I didn't know what that flashcard was asking. Very important strategy. So be concise. Number three, give your flashcards context. You don't want to just start by um, creating flashcards before you know enough about the material. You also want to include context clues on the back of your flashcard, not on the front. You want to make it as difficult as possible for you to genuinely retrieve as much as you can from memory using active recall. You don't want to give yourself clues that will make it easier for you to recall. So context clues on the back could be, what is the big picture concept of this piece of information? Is this a single step of a bigger process? What topic or chapters does this information belong to? All things that you want to give yourself context for to help yourself remember that information. You could also use images over here. 
So if you were to be asked to remember what an apple is, we often don't remember apple as the word A-P-P-L-E. We image in our brains what an apple would look like. So studying with the use of images is very helpful because our brains generally categorize things with images. Number five, make less decks of information. So this uses the concept of interleaving, but try and make um, a deck for all the things you need so that you can continue to test the stuff over time in the spaced repetition with the system of um, Feist over here. It will tell you when you need to retest it. So if you keep it all in one deck, it will keep sending you these flashcards um, when you need to test it. And it's very helpful because you get spaced repetition of it. Um, so don't split it up into too many decks. You want to combine your decks and then test among them. It makes it harder and more memorable. Effort equals retention. Use mnemonic devices are very helpful. I used Feist that I've been using to help you remember that technique over here. And you can also give it further context. The reason I created the word Feist because our memory is Feisty. Feisty means troublesome and we have troublesome memory. We're always in a state of forgetting. So giving it context and using mnemonic devices can definitely help us memorize information. You can even create sayings for PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, more than just PEMDAS, which is for order of operations. Then two more, use enumeration for flashcards, which is the technique that I showed you guys where you have the list over here. Simply using bullet points, it will show them all at once, but using enumeration, it makes you recall each and individual card at once. So it makes it harder. We have to remember each point in that order so enumeration is the strategy of only having one pop up at you at a time. And finally, try testing it forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards is the two-way flashcard that I had shown earlier. Doing it two ways makes it a lot harder. And if you know it from both front and back, then you can't be tricked on the test if they give it to you a different way. Learn to be versatile with your knowledge pathways. The more ways you test it, the better you will know it. So those eight strategies for flashcard tips combined with the five different ways you can create remnant flashcards uh, should be able to help you get started in creating flashcards in RemNotes. And a great tool, once you've made flashcards across all your subjects, if you click on flashcards, you can test all flashcards that you've ever made and you can interleave that, mix it up so that everything you've tested is all here. And it will only give you the stuff that you've clicked, um, you know, for forgotten parts of the world, it will use the spacing effect to help you remember it. It's not gonna give you stuff you immediately were able to um, recall and make sure you honestly click too soon if it's too soon because your half-life you don't know how long your memory is going to last and if you just went over it you want to click too soon so that it will give it to you again and you'll get to retest it so that's what i have for you guys today hopefully you guys got some value out of this enjoyed and i hope you guys uh try the strategy let me know what you think if you try to create flashcards in remnote and um i hope i'll see you guys in the next video hope you guys enjoyed